Nowadays we are used with music stored digitally, but for a long time the only way to store sound was analog and mechanically stored on discs like this one. Years ago, while I had a side business as a documentary producer, I went to film one of the few factories of discs in Europe. However, after filming we discovered that the footage got damaged. And uh, really it would have been a bummer to lose that work as you will see soon. And uh, so it remained in an archive for a long time and only recently I've been able to reconstruct uh, most of it. So eventually I made this two part video and uh, today I'm glad to bring you into this really fascinating story about how sound is mechanically carved and replicated on discs that are still loved by many people. I am uh, Filippo De Fassi and I am the owner and general manager of uh, Phonopress International uh, SRL, which is the only vinyl manufacturing company in Italy. I think that uh, uh, there must be around 25 or maximum 30 factories uh, all over the world doing this. But keep on doing this. So let's begin understanding what is a vinyl phonograph and how it works. Because it is very likely that many younger people don't even know what is a vinyl phonograph. A phonograph disc uh, uh, stores uh, the sound as a small deviation from a spiraling groove that can be seen in this very old disc. And these deviations uh, are proportional uh, to the amplitude of the sound and um, instant by an instant uh, along the groove uh, uh, while the disc spins. Uh, Imagine it like uh, a microscopic canyon. <laughs> so unwinding the groove from the spiral, it can be seen as a linear motion, like unwinding a tape from its roll. A stylus with a needle tip uh, that uh, uh, travel inside the groove uh, follows its meanders that uh, in turn they move the stylus uh, that pivot at the center and move the stylus uh, with the coil that is immersed into a magnetic field and uh, so it generates a, a current that is proportional to the deviation and it is amplified and sent to a loudspeaker to reproduce the music. Instead of moving coil, also magnet heads also exist, they uh, are just arranged the opposite way, the stylus move, um, the moves a magnet which induces a current uh, into a new moving coils that are located instead of the magnet. Uh, it's the same thing uh, but arranged uh, in the reverse. This uh, is the Neumann uh, VMS 70. Uh, there are about uh, 50 machines like this uh, over the world, I think, maybe a little bit more. This model is, uh, uh, was owned by Polygram Italy and uh, it is uh, a slightly different model in the sense that uh, the variable pitch uh, has been changed. These are the boards of the variable pitch and works uh, almost like uh, the pitch of the VMS 80 which, which was uh, the um, later model, more sophisticated. This is uh, an average model, okay, hybrid model. Uh, this is the mechanical part uh, where the grooves are cut. This is the cutter head. The grooves uh, are cut uh, on the lacquer. There is a motor driving this uh, plate, which must be 100% flat. Uh, the motor uh, controls the speed. Uh, the speed must be constant uh, and uh, the motor has a servo brake. So the first step to make a disc is to engrave a groove. And this is performed with a lathe, a special lathe with a special cutting head that drives a sharp needle at the tip of a stylus driven by power coils. The lathe cuts the groove into a lacquer disc which is a, an aluminum disc coated with nitrocellulose. The lacquer must be super smooth and to keep it firmly on the lathe turntable is used vacuum. 
That is why the table has all these small holes on it. So before starting to cut, the operator uh, activates the vacuum pump, which causes the lacquer disc to stick on the spinning table. This is the amplification. Um, this is a very sophisticated uh, uh, um, signal, uh, um, how can I say, a very sophisticated uh, uh, circuit, because uh, the cutter head uh, has a feedback uh, uh, signal and uh, what you hear uh, while you are cutting is exactly what uh, is cut uh, by the cutter head. Not what comes uh, to the cutter head but uh, what comes after the cutter head. There is the feedback is a, uh, a, a correction of the signal which uh, eliminates uh, the mechanical resonances uh, uh, which are mostly due to the shape of the stylus and to the length of the stylus and you have to calibrate this circuit uh, very carefully. To sum it up, the lathe not only cuts the disc, but also tracks the just-made groove to send it back uh, the signal that is used to counteract the cutting head to increase the fidelity, fidelity of the record. Then uh, another thing of this machine is uh, that it can uh, separate uh, or better space the grooves uh, according to what is going next. So if there is uh, a few modulation, it packs the grooves. Uh, if there is a big modulation, it spaces uh, the groove so that the, the groove never overlap. And uh, this is very helpful because it saves you a lot of space in the lacquer and you can cut at a higher volume uh, uh, on the same uh, diameter. So the lathe uses the average amplitude to dynamically vary the spacing between the grooves, which is really smart. Now I'm going to show you the procedure uh, that we use when we cut, uh, which is basically um, you have to uh, calculate how many row grooves per millimeter you want to cut according to the space you have. Then you have to check the, 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 the signal, what is coming, and how the uh, row per millimeter change, and so you can adjust the cutting volume and achieve the best result uh, according to the space you have. Now we are going to cut a 7 inch, so it's not a big deal, but on a long LP this uh, setting matters very much. This uh, is, uh, we, we call it the cutting current, so it drives uh, the, um, the cutter head to cut wider or uh, narrower grooves. Uh, according to the current which is given and this is the heating current uh, which uh, uh, with these tiny copper wires heats uh, the the cutting stylus you can see a little uh, stylus here which is a, a sapphire an industrial sapphire what i described earlier is the recording of a monero sound but how about stereo sound which is made of two separated audio channels. How two channels can fit into a single groove? So the idea is to make the groove not only to deviate horizontally, but also vertically. So to make the disc compatible with the monaural reproducers uh, and to avoid other problems, the two detectors that pick up the audio information from a single stylus are tilted by 45 degrees. That this way, the left and right signals are engraved uh, on the respective left and right sides of the groove but only on the lower phase not the upper phase you can see the 45 degree yellow uh, heads that drives the cutting stylus on the lathe and because this uh, requires energy uh, and um, it is concentrated in a very small spot uh, this causes the coil to heat up very rapidly, so a constant flow of helium is used to cool down the head. Turn the machine on. This is the helium which cools down the cutter head and comes from there. So turn the lamp on. We have to cut. Uh, this is correct. This is the slot uh, uh, 17 centimeters and the 45 RPM. This means a 7 inch 
uh, classic 7 inch 45 rpm this is the program this is basically these programs uh, it tell the machine where the carriage of the cutter had has to start cutting according to the diameter uh, of the record you need some extra space to plate the stampers to trim the edges of the stampers and also here you have uh, some extra outer space for example to uh, to test the groove you do it with the microscope this switch the vacuum on then we push start and then we look how the groove is is very clean cutter is on then the carriage goes ahead the cutter head goes down cuts the lid in groove and when the time sign goes off, we start. So this is how your disc, your analog disc, your vinyl is cut. Look. When we push the fast button, the machine closes uh, the record. And uh, as you can see, it makes uh, an endless groove uh, stopping just before the diameter of the label. Of course, we, there, there is no label yet, but on the record it will be. Now the cutter have the, has lift. We stop the motor. We have a quick look uh, with the microscope. We do in order to be sure about uh, two basic things. First thing is that uh, the antiphase of the signal, once uh, you, you have set a basic groove width, this groove width will change uh, according to the stereo signal and uh, the positive or negative uh, antiphase that th this signal has. The stereo signal is engraved at 45 degrees on the two walls of the groove. However, this might cause problems if the sound to record has two channels that are in antiphase and this will cause the groove to move up and down only uh, causing the stylus to jump or potentially even damaging the cutting head. There is a phase correlation meter in this console which shows you there is a certain amount of antiphase. This amount of antiphase never creates problem. You have problems when you go in this area and of course this is Below zero. Below zero, negative antiphase, uh, because the groove uh, uh, tends to get really, really, really too thin. And uh, the second thing is uh, that you have to check that the grooves don't touch uh, between uh, themselves. If you go too thick with the groove, a little portion of the groove uh, might touch the groove uh, on the left, on on the right. In most of the cases they, they touch, but if they are not interleaved, nothing happens. Now, what I'm going to do is to do the etching. The final step of this stage, cutting the disc, is making uh, some engraving marks specific of the record and of the manufacturer. What is the etching is uh, what you see in the matrix, the classic, uh, you know, matrix number. Next step is to prepare the disc for the uh, replication process. Uh, the space is called silvering and uh, nickeling that we'll see in the next video. I want many thanks Mr. Filippo the Fashing for having thoroughly accompanied us into all these details uh, while visiting his factory back in 2014 and having me allowed to make this film. I spent a really interesting day with him and he was a great host. Thanks Filippo. I hope you will uh, convince with me that we have been a bummer losing this footage and the video you just watched. So I hope you will hit a big thumb up and share this video with your friends. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah.